Where is the freedom we search for, which will give us rest from the psychological unrest, confusion and anxiety most of us face in the modern world? In the perceived worlds of the East and West, this unrest seems incurable. Is there an inspiration of hope as we search for answers to our fundamental problems? Is there a way of overcoming these problems and experience inner happiness? The only way that you can know this reality is looking at yourself. The ultimate reality that exists has everything. Where should you look at to know that reality? You cannot look outside and perceive that reality. You are an integral part of that reality. So you can, you, instead of lo looking outside, look inside yourself. That is called Andarmakhatva. By looking within yourself, you will know what, what you are, what is the reality in you. Gold finds expression in the form of a chain or a ring. In the same way, this non-dual reality that is beyond words, it finds expression as us, as the world, as everything. It is a flow of expressions that is becoming. When we learn philosophy, this becomes a sort of concept in us. Universal is something invisible. Particular is, particular forms are always visible. So, the universal reality is one. Particular uh, forms in which this un uh, reality appears, there are many, many. Without a universal reality existing, there can be no particular forms. And no particular form can exist without a reality existing. The universal being and the particular becoming, these are inseparably one, that is the non-duality. This philosophy is not to be conceived, it is to be lived. When we live this philosophy, what happens to us? Instead of thinking that, oh, I am one with the whole. In the actual life, you, I have to find my oneness with the whole.
there are two aspects in the reality one is the eternally existing aspect that that is the same stainless steel here then the transient aspect what is transient in the same way in the world also all of us appear and disappear don't we yes so all of us are transient beings there is a eternal and eternal reality that appears as ourselves that appears and disappears something that appears and disappears that is transient Adi Shankara, the early 8th century philosopher, reputed to have founded four monasteries which helped in the historical development where revival and spread of Advaita Vedanta was born. There are people who are living in cities as if caught in the rat trap. Uh, and there are people who are aware that uh, they are in a tra caught in a rat trap. And uh, there are people who are not aware of it as if that is life. Uh, live, uh, going around in the uh, rat trap, that itself is life for them. If that is a feeling, we can't do anything, leave them like that. And uh, there are people who are aware that they are, uh, this kind of rat trap is there and they are ca caught within it. If they, they live with the awareness of it, this awareness, they can be helped uh, to, to become free when they are in the tra rat trap. Mm, sense of freedom they can develop uh, even when they are in the rat trap. Mm, that, that is kind of help Narayana Gurugula is doing for such people. They live as if caught in it, but making aware that they are uh, caught in such a rat trap and uh, find time to uh, be free in the, at least in their mind. In Kerala, we now go to Alua, a small town in state of Travancore, a broad river of crystal water winding its way through the town. A place where Sri Nairayana Guru was often found sitting, overlooking the waters in meditation. Sri Nairayana Guru was a wisdom teacher, a philosopher and a yogi. His wisdom is of eternal significance and of great value for the whole of humanity. He showed how this wisdom could be lived in practical human life. That application was as significant at the particular time he was living and the place he was living in. Everybody on this planet is unique, but only a few of us are blessed to touch the heart of millions. I had much adoration for Narayana Guru, and uh, that happened uh, through the stories told me by my, by my father about Narayana Guru, and he had himself uh, had prasadam from Narayana Guru when he visited Vakkam. That is his, that is 
my father's native place. And when I was uh, 11 years old, when I was studying in the Kilimanur RRV school, in the, in the annual meeting, concluding meeting, Nataraji Guru was to distribute, distribute all the prizes to uh, the winners. And I was uh, the first to receive the prize uh, among the small kids. Nataraji Guru shook hands with me and gave me the prize. It was an event that was unforgettable in my life. Uh, and my, from my father, I heard that uh, this Dr. Natarajan, most educated disciple of Nataraji Guru, of Narayana Guru. So from that time onwards, I had a kind of desire within my heart. Uh, is it possible to become a disciple of this uh, great man, Nataraji Guru? Prasad was born in 1938 in Nagarur, Tiru Anantapuram district, Kerala. A seed of desire was planted in his mind since he was a child and that he would be part of this family of Gurukula. I spent my time always playing and I studied, I studying also was part of my having a sense of having spare time. I think it is a modern idea, modern concept that arose from the city life of people. In the village life, I don't think there is a sense of having spare time. After passing SSLC, I could have joined a teacher's training school and become a teacher the very next year. But my mind uh, went some, some, some other way. I thought of having an engineering course. As part of the engineering course, I, 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 I could uh, have contact with the Gurukula. Uh, and Nataraji Guru, Tejai all Nethi, all this happened only because I was uh, having the engineering course. A Tao calling him to live the life of a spiritual aspirant, perhaps? The young Prasad was touched to his inner being, having the chance to meet Nataraja Guru again at the Gurukula. Prasad wants to become a disciple of this great learned guru. Who was this charismatic figure Prasad was willing to surrender to? And coming to the Gurugulam happened only because through the man who was running the engineering institute in Vakkam. Uh, that man was uh, a close devotee of Nataraji Guru and uh, uh, the year, in the year I was studying engineering there, and Raji Guru wanted uh, him, and he means uh, Kunjigashan, the, the, the man who was running the engineering institute. He asked, Raji Guru asked him to uh, make a plan for a, for a temple to be built in uh, Gudal, Gudalur area, in a, in a, in a tea estate for the use of Tamil people working there. And uh, he, not, Kujigashan, Mr. Kujigashan directed me and uh, one of my classmates to the Gurugula to, to be here when the Gurugula convention was going on uh, and also to, uh, to participate in the Gurugula convention and to uh, uh, make a plan as directed by Nataraji Guru. And we were sitting there the whole week and making the plan and also attending the programs in the Gurukula Convention. That is the first time I, I came into the Gurukula and had contact with Nandraji Guru. And that is for how the works. Uh, I had the inner desire to become a 
uh, disciple of Nataraj Guru and uh, somehow Dava directed me to the Gurukula. The book An Integrated Science of the Absolute covers the major Eastern and Western philosophers. The Taraja Guru discovers a common structural framework to which all of them could be fitted so as to form an integrated science of the Absolute. Nataraja Guru mentions the help that he got from Jean Convent, Dr. Joseph Vecruz, and Celine Giavert, who read to him the passages from Bergson's criticism of Einstein's theories. He conceived all the philosophies and sciences as various forms in which one human understanding finds expression. Thus he created a bridge between the different people across all disciplines, transcending all limitations. This was the great guru that young Prasad was drawn to. So what is metaphysics? Metaphysics is the study of reality. This is a huge subject matter and it covers all kinds of things. In addition to space and time, the things that I mostly work on, it asks what is matter? How does causation work? How did the universe get started? What are the things around us and what are they like? Are things necessary? Are things that don't exist possible or impossible. I think that metaphysics fascinates us because the universe is very, very big and we are very small. And figuring out just what the world is like and our relationship to this enormous universe is a topic of deep and abiding fascination for humans. Western philosophy is often said to begin with the Greeks. The most famous of them are Socrates, Aristotle, Plato. Arguably, this tradition is actually much older. It might even come from Egypt or other parts of Africa. The Western tradition, as I understand it, is one of interconnected texts. So these Greek thinkers, Aristotle, Plato and so on, they were picked up by Western medieval philosophers like Augustine, Aquinas, and then taken up and argued over further by philosophers like Descartes, John Locke, Leibniz, um, Mary Wollstonecraft, Rousseau, Simone de Beauvoir, Kant, Bertrand Russell. Western philosophy forms an interconnected patchwork of different people considering variations on the same topics. But what makes it a common tradition, I think, is that they are generally referring to the same sets of texts. During the 1920s and 1930s, the really big philosophical names included Bergson, on the other side of the pond, there is Bertrand Russell. We also have Albert Einstein, the physicist, becoming a huge personality at that time. People were so impressed by his um, achievements, especially with regards to relativity. Even if they didn't really understand them, he was honoured as being a really great mind. And these three, Bergson, Russell, Einstein, I think can really be said to be the great influences of that period. Nataraja Guru taught Prasad various methods of learning. He made it a habit to go to a good bookshop and buy two selected books 
every time he visited. He found this much more appealing. Guru Nitya wrote, Masters like the Buddha and Christ and the rishis of the Upanishads draw a distinction between the world of transactional gains and the world of spiritual attainments, pointing out that transactional methods only serve us well in their appropriate context. The Indian saints call the world of transactional gains one of the small pleasure and the world of the spiritual attainment the greater happiness. Prasad gets a government job and was posted to Kullam. Prasad was finding it difficult to find a place to stay near his work. Mangalananda Swami, the head of Varkala Gurukulam, allowed him to stay at the Gurukula and go to work. Mr. Jayachandran, who became Nitya Chatyanya Yati, shared stories of Nataraja Guru. One such story was on economical distribution. When I was living at the Somanali Gurukula, I used to grow tomatoes. I would water my small plot, and as the months went by, I enjoyed watching the green fruits appear and swell and redden. None ever became fully developed, however. In the night, the poor villagers would come and pluck the ripe fruits. I was very angry about it. Nataraja Guru, who was visiting at the time, told me, No, no, it works very well this way. The tomatoes are finding a home where they are most needed. If we gave them away, we wouldn't know who really needed what. Now they go directly into needy pots. It's the most economical distribution system. The wisdom is therefore transmitted from Nataraja Guru to Guru Nitya to Munni Prasad, one-to-one, face-to-face, from one human personal interaction to another. Prasad never left the Gurukula again. He finds a home from which he could break away from external and worldly pursuits and old habits. Habits learned from his family of origin, his school, friends, religion and all notions of living a successful, competitive, modern life to which he did not aspire to. In the early years when Rajaguru was giving classes, I attended them, but I didn't understand anything except the jokes he says in between the class. But I felt that something great is there in his words. Feeling not educated like Nataraja Guru, Swami Nitya, or John Spears, who was then editing the Values magazine, Prasad decides that he should also have an academic qualification to improve his credibility. He questions his own self amongst these great sannyasins. If anyone has influenced me, it was Nataraj Guru and also Nitya Nedi. Guru Nitya, in his book, In the Stream of Consciousness, explained, Yoga is not just sitting cross-legged and freezing into a static corpse of the past. It is a conscious participation in the scheme of life. He is drawn into the spirit of the interactions with the gurus around him and the love of wisdom that they were living and breathing. They loved wisdom and truth without compromise. What is his inherent nature? I want to live my own life, even in... uh, in my young, younger years, uh, I didn't try to imitate anyone in the society. Hmm? I lost my mother when I was 10, and when she was dying, I was playing around the ground. I didn't feel any seriousness of the, of the event that was taking place. But later on, I felt uh, it was a serious event. Uh, and uh, I looked at how much my father had to suffer because of that. We, uh, he had to take care of uh, we three, three children, <coughs> of which I was the eldest. Mm. And so he had to remarry to take care of us. And he had to tr- go through many, many troubles because of it because of it. Prasad would visit his father every month after the salary day. Every time he would go, his father would tell Prasad 
to leave Gurukulam and return home and be responsible instead of trying to be a sannyasin. However, Prasad, by 1965, had made up his mind. To follow his swadharma, the prefix swa means oneself. Thus, swadharma is our personal dharma, which is the dharma applicable to our personal traits, our context, situation, maturity and profession in life. This swadharma can change as our context in life changes and as we grow spiritually in one's own role in the social and cosmic order. Prasad seeks a more purposeful and truthful living. He seeks the truth of how the personal self and the universal self are one. He wants to pursue and become intimate with the higher realms of knowledge. His passion grows for wisdom. He reads the word of the Guru and studies Shankara's Viveka Chudamani and various Upanishads and other wisdom texts of both the East and the West. He had already discovered it is more enjoyable to be oneself than to pretend to be someone else. The duties born of one's nature can be easily performed with the stability of mind and joy. If they conflict with one's nature, they will create disharmony in the senses, mind and intellect. He did not want to disobey his father's wishes either, which caused him much mental stress. However, he knew his path was a different one. Why did a 25-year-old man wish to become a sannyasin and turn away from his father and the social and cultural influences? Prasad was also put under extreme pressure into the boiling cauldron of Nataraja Guru's outbursts. But Prasad's conditioned notions were being burnt away. Nataraja Guru would ask, What is the intention of you three young men? Do you think you can become a Mangalananda Swami? Do you think you can become a Nitya Chaitanya Yati? When Nitya returned, Nataraja Guru tells him jokingly that he had kept his prasad beaten down here, meaning he had tested him with full fiery force. They giggled. Prasad had passed Nataraja Guru's fiery test. Nataraja Guru was the one person whom I loved, who loved me, and I cannot, I, I'm not able to say what was the impact of Nataraj Guru in my life. Nataraj Guru was everything for me. Nataraj Guru's uh, approach to people is not uh, bearable by for many, but I knew what was a, a great guru's, what would be a great guru's uh, behavior to his disciple, even when he, he, he deals with me in a very rough way. I would just take it very easy. Uh, I considered it as part of a, a Gurukula life. Hmm. Titiksha is one of the qualities a disciple should have. Titiksha means the willingness to suffer any, uh, to, to wear any kind of suffering in, uh, in life without any complaint. So that kind of that attitude always was, was, with, was with me. So there was no problem for me being with Nataraj Guru. But many people who came to Nataraj Guru to become disciples have run away. They did not know then that he had already made a firm decision not to leave the Gurukula. He learns that superior to the senses is the mind. Beyond the mind is the intellect, and he inquired, what is even beyond the intellect? (laughs) 
Prasad traveled with Nataraja Guru in connection with organizing the 11-day World Conference for Peace through Unity of Understanding at Erumala. This was to show the world how non-dual vision, Advaita Darshan, alone would ensure universal and lasting peace, but also how each could find peace within their own lives. He presented his first paper there in English. Uh, we came back from Bayanur after conducting the uh, uh, World Conference for Peace through Unity Understanding there for that at, uh, it was running for 11, 11 days. Uh, after completing it, he was getting angry with me. It was as if I was responsible for that. And I couldn't answer for such kind of uh, anger with me. After reaching here, when sitting here in this room, all of a sudden he slapped me on my face seven times. I didn't know for what, for what kind of guilt I, it was behind it. I, I was just innocent. Uh, anyway, I took it very, very easy. And uh, next day, when I went to him, he was, uh, he was sitting in the Naranagiri where the Parma Vidya Mandiram is there now. Uh, he just told me, I don't know what, for what purpose, why, why, why did uh, I slapped you on the, on, on the face. And uh, you suffered it peacefully. In 1967, aged 29, Prasad was given Brahmachari Deksha by Nataraja Guru as Nataraja Guru needed a second successor. John Spears had left the Gurukula. Manglananda Swami had passed away, leaving only Nitya Chaitanya Yeti Swami as successor. Brahmacharin is a formal entry into the path of sannyasa. No woman is expected to enter his life, no comfortable job and career. He goes through a radical change and transformation. By the age of 30, it still bothered him that he would not be able to send any money to help his father. Prasad resigns from government services. His sister was already married. He had no savings and no personal income. Prasad faces huge conflicts between his determination to pursue truth and to let go of worldly attachments. Prasad visited his father one last time, who was on his deathbed. Munni Prasad is fully committed to becoming a sannyasin. He dedicates himself wholeheartedly to an absolutist way of life. Prasad's father passes away. Prasad arranged for the family to perform the funeral rites for his father in his absence. He is now fully committed to the role of a sannyasin. He dedicates himself wholeheartedly to an absolutist way of life. He is in the process of becoming free from attachments and fear. Absolutists are undisturbed and equipoised in every situation. He also relinquished all financial inheritance. In 1972, age 34, Prasad is included in the Parampara lineage of disciples to carry the torch. Initially, he felt a sense of dread. However, his learning had prepared him to resolve doubts and uncertainties. Prasad is now fully committed for the service of the collective consciousness. Nataraja Guru becomes ill and Munni cares for him. Nataraja Guru is calm and peaceful. Following the lineage, Guru Nitya becomes the next Guru taking on the role as the continuator of a Nataraja Guru, as head of Nayarana Gurkula. And also he had uh, a leaning towards psychology. 
and so he could uh, interpret Nar- narayana guru's philosophy or narayana guru's works uh, on the lines of psychology showing showing the world how it can there is such a philosophy can be used to the psychological problems that people are facing at the moment i think that is the best of all contributions he made to the world and based on that he wrote the book the psychology of the cinemala and uh, the the other book that alone the core of wisdom you can say that it's psychological interpretation of narayana guru's philosophy that is what he did uh, for the benefit of the world But to show the world how can a philosophy of life can be applied in our psychological problems uh, they of uh, individual psychological problems guru nitya chaitanya yati states this transformation is happening not only as an event within the seeker's psyche but it also fashions a world a world that can grow around them and can continue to expand in different directions for several years or sometimes even for centuries after their death i was made a successor to guru nitya jayati Uh, when i was only 32 it was a shock to me when raja guru told me that i am going to make a will today uh, 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 on declaring that he, this muni narayana prasad will succeed nitya jayadevi in the gurugula from that time onwards i was taking it as a challenge in my life uh, how can i take this responsibility and then of course i was preparing myself all these years will was made in 1932 i mean when i was 32 and guru nitya jayadevi passed away when i was 60 so in the all these years i was preparing myself to take the responsibility of being the next guru i didn't i didn't have any idea I, how i was i was going to manage i can only say that dawo helped me uh, to take this challenge and now i think i didn't fail that raja guru had encouraged him to formulate his own ideas and to write editorials in his own name and to ponder on questions with an absolutist outlook prasad adheres to the responsibilities of running an ashram based on strict principles thus he becomes a true karma yogi overcoming desire by performing dedicated action towards a larger cause in the field of his swadharma prasad witnesses the difficulties in balancing the finance of an ashram all against the commercial interests without deviating from the teachings of sri nayarana guru he has to draw a fine line between acquiring wealth and living in luxury as opposed to living in a natural state and flow with harmony with the environment the notion that the universe provides in bounty for everyone the balance has to be struck a very challenging time somewhere nadraj guru defined narayana guru gulam as an island of peace in the middle of the ocean of insanity narayana guru gulam is a place where wisdom seekers can come and live and have wisdom guru gulam means the family of a guru where the guru is the Fam, uh, the, the chief of the family and disciples are the members. Mm. 
So they live as brothers and sisters in the Gurukula and uh, have wisdom lessons continuously going on here in the Gurukula in the morning and evening. And they will always be studying uh, books as guided by the Guru. Narana Guru's philosophy was a living philosophy. When he lived, he got into the, in the problems of, the, of people. How, 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 did, how did he perceive it? He perceived the problems faced by people as the problems he was facing. Because he found himself one with the whole and the, these people also are included within that whole. So, identify, identifying oneself with the whole includes identifying with oneself with everything in nature, in life. In 1984, Prasad becomes Swami Munni Prasad, a sannyasin aged 46 years old. Swami Munni Prasad travels the world giving talks and holding classes. He spends close to three years in Fiji. His major achievement being there, apart from spreading Vedantic philosophy and philosophy of Nayarana Guru, was his completion of both English and Malayalam commentary of the Vedanta Sutra of Nayarana Guru. Translation of Nataraja Guru's commentary on Saundaraya Lahiri and basic lessons of India's wisdom. Swami Munni Prasad flies to Portland to a gurukulam then run by Scott Teetsworth and Deborah Buchanan. Swami Munni Prasad was invited to London by Mr. Gangadharan, on whose request he wrote the commentary on Atmopatesha Shatakam. In the airport, he was received by Mr. Gangadharan and others from Sri Nairana Guru Mission of the UK. He observed that people in London liked to walk. He visited Sheila John in the coastal town of Lu and Wendy Locke, both disciples of Guru Nitya, and conducted classes at both places. After the Samadhi of Nitya Chaitanya Yeti in 1999, 
Swami Prasad becomes the next guru and the head of the Nayarana Guru Kalam. As of 1999, at the age of 61, Guru Muni had authored about 90 books, including commentaries of eight major Upanishads. The three gurus wrote three separate commentaries on the Darshana Mala of Nayarana Guru. Nataraja Guru used a scientific methodology approach in his An Integrated Science of the Absolute. Nitya Guru took more of a psychological approach in his commentary called Psychology of Darshana Mala. Guru Muni took a revised perspective of the Upanishads called Garland of Visions, making it relevant for the current modern age, while fully acknowledging the tradition. And it is a very wonderful experience to live with a great Guru. And that itself of Narayana Guru, Nandaraja Guru and Nitya Guru Parampara. So this philosophy of Narayana Guru is something unique. And we need dedicated wisdom teachers. And the Absolute has, the Dao has selected Guru Muni to, that, to do that great act of being a Guru in the Parambara. This secret of uh, dialect is God revealed before me, opened before me. Some secret chamber, chambers of Vedanta became re revealed to me through the secret of Veda dialectics. If you go through the Saundar Lahiri, finally what you uh, attain is you become uh, enabled to perceive the beauty of your own existence as part of this world. Beauty of life, beauty of the world as a whole. When you say beauty, Sundaria, uh, or as it is perceived in the Saundar Lahari, is not different from the Ananda that is understood in the Advaita Vedanta. Ananda, when it becomes perceived, it becomes Saundarya. Hmm? Something that is felt within, that is Ananda. Something perceived, Ananda perceived, it, be, it becomes Saundarya. So, here in this Saundarya, in this Sri Chakra that is, that you can see behind, that was Actually, this uh, Sri Chakra is the symbolism in the, in the uh, Tantra Sampradaya, Tantric tradition of India, uh, in which it is seen, it is shown how the philosophy of life, your own existence, your own existence depends upon the coming together of male and female. That, that you can see in our life, in the life of the entire existence of the world, and when it is uh, perceived as 
as a, as an, as a reality that pertains to the whole. <laughs> it is called the Prakriti and Purusha in, in, in the Sankhya philosophy. Uh, in the the word the tradition it is uh, in and yang and like that in a, in all the traditions you can see these two principles male and fem of female and female remaining inseparably one at present guru munni prasad's quiet generosity has been a stabilizing and welcoming invitation to seekers the unifying thread running through these different gurus is a dedicated search for wisdom coupled with the ability to uniquely express one's inner vision, which is another way of saying that the unchanging absolute is manifested individually in each person, their own dharma, one of the infinite expressions of the undivided self. Moksha means final freedom, ultimate freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from your bondage. You are bound to many, many things in your ordinary life. When you attain your oneness with the absolute reality, it is not, I don't say, at the time of death. It is even when you are living here at the present moment. <coughs> If you find your identity with the Absolute Reality, forgetting all, all these worldly, worldly that, that, that which is related to the worldly life, you forget all these. I am that, that one, one whole. If you have that kind of identity with the whole, then that reality with which you, are, you find your identity, that is a reality that is not bound to anything. And if you f find your identity with the, that reality, that reality is freedom because becomes yours, yours also. That, what happens? You become free, ultimate free. Oh, till now I felt I was bound to everything. Now I feel I am free of all these, all these things. life. 